Well, the uh, the May or June meeting, it's got the, the agendas. I'm calling it the June meeting because it's still June. Uh, economic Development and UW Extension meeting to order. Madam Clerk, we have roll call. James Schlender. Present. Tom Duffy. Here. Jesse Betcher. Brian Bizonette. Stacy Hessel. Here. Here. Moving on now to number three, certification of compliance with open meetings laws. The meeting has been noticed to the public and news media as requested Traded. by section 19 of the report of Wisconsin staff. All right, we have a meeting agenda. Does everyone have the most recent version? Take a look at what you have in front of you. I have the May 10th. It was on the corner, but I've looked at the May or the June 7th. So we have a June 7th agenda. One of the things I want to make sure that's on there is uh, number 13 on the agenda is a letter of support for the Ojibwe College. And then uh, if you have number 13, then you have a the updated sequential order. It's on the screen. I did not reprint after Friday afternoon. Well, it's <laughs> All right, moving on now to uh, number five, public comments. Is there anybody who's here who wishes to address the committee on an issue that either is not on the agenda or something that they want to address the committee with? Is there anybody online? Zilmer. Zilmer. Good morning, Linda Zilmer, Edgewater property owner. Um, I wanted to make a couple of public comments this morning that tie together agenda items with the committee's recent work and interest in history in Sawyer County. Uh, at the last county board meeting, the mission statement was sent back to this committee for further work. Um, there seems to be some clarification needed on reporting. Um, so tying that into history, the old website uh, links for the Sawyer County website includes the materials from an economic development summit that was held at LCO uh, greatly attended with many informative speakers and some pre-work done by our former extension uh, person to identify economic development and other community development issues in Sawyer County. At that time, there was no economic development committee. Shortly thereafter, a committee was created that only met quarterly and didn't do much with the learnings from the summit. And probably Mr. Paulson was on uh, county board about the time that monthly meetings were held and it turned into a committee that was kind of became in charge of the resource development fund, which was a large pot of money that was used for things like dam repair and other county uh, costs, significant costs, and also the ATC power line funds. So groups were coming to this committee then to ask for money either from resource development or ATC. And that's why you have groups like, um, and maybe Mr. Mrotek can verify, uh, the Alliance used to get money from the county and other groups did. So for instance, motorized trails, they reported both to the forestry committee because that's where the trails were being developed and then kept this committee appraised of what was going on um, framing it in terms of economic development. I also want to address the mission statement in terms of uh, the uh, lack of addressing planning. I mean, it's talking about monitoring things and um, measuring things, but it needs to be measured against a plan. The Sawyer County is in the process of giving, um, working on the update to the county's comprehensive plan. The original one was developed after this economic development summit. Um, Northwest Regional Planning in this go round did not even intend to have a public informational hearing, although one will be set now. But there has been no input from any of the county committees on any of the elements of the update to the comprehensive plan. And that is something you might want to address in a future committee meeting. Thank you. Any other comments, any other public comments? Hearing none, moving on to number six, 
Has the committee had a chance to review the minutes from last month's meeting? Mr. President, it's now on record. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the May 10th meeting. I have a motion from Ms. Hessel. And I'll second it. I have a second from Mr. Duffy to approve the minutes as presented. Is that correct? Any discussion on the motion? Let the record reflect that Mr. Bizonette is present. Virtually. Okay, thank you. Hearing no discussion, call for a vote. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Moving on to number seven, Surrey County Agricultural Fair Association report. Did, did Madam Clerk, we receive a report? No, no, we did not. We did not hear. Moving on to number Eight, UW extension report. Mm -hmm. Nothing new to report this month. We'll have our quarterly report for you next month. Okay. Any questions on the non report? <laughs> on. <laughs> uh, number nine, Hayward Lakes Visitor and Convention Bureau, Ms. Beckman. Thanks, Lynn, for sliding that in. I don't know why it didn't get to you. But, um, so, I, what I did for this month was just I wanted to show you all the money that um, all the grants that we wrote last year and the money that we brought in. Um, I don't know if you want me to go through each one of them or um, just, we, we worked really hard to get some of that um, grant money. And then we did get some COVID relief with that employee retention tax credit. And then I just wanted to kind of recap the Wisconsin fishing opener. It, it went really well and you know it was on then it was off it was on then it was off so scrambling around a lot at the end there but it, it it really was a nice event and then our summer project is going to be we're going to give our website uh, a refresh so we're going to have a new look and then the largest growing media right now is youtube so we've been kind of looking at our youtube account and it's not doing what it should be doing so that is our main focus for the summer and then lots of great pr um, of course, a lot of it reflected from the fishing opener and also the um, musky fishing opener dates. So that's our report. Any questions for Ms. Beckman? Mr. Bissonette, do you have any questions for Ms. Beckman? Uh, no, I don't. I have a question. How many grants did you apply for and how many were you successful with? Everyone I applied for, I got. Excellent. And then is it you that does that? Yep. Good job. Wait, it's not easy. I don't enjoy, enjoy it. I don't enjoy it. <laughs> no, no, I do. <laughs> She's not volunteering to do more, she said. I think this is an excellent report because as we get ready for our budget discussions, I know that. Uh, That's why I wanted to kind of show you guys when you see that we actually did, we did well last year, but that's because we got all this money that came in from other sources. Any other questions? Thank you very much for your report. Moving on to number 10, Northwest Regional Planning Commission report. We receive any from Mr. <coughs> Johnson. Mr. Johnson's not present. Uh, Mr. Hopp, I think it's Im imperative that Mr. Johnson make himself available for the next meeting. So we can convey that to him. Uh, moving on to number 11, Economic Development Corporation report. We have a report that's submitted by Mr. Gardner um, has everyone had a chance to re review that report? Mr. Gardner, is there anything we wish to highlight from that report? Well, there's two items, you know, I, my monthly activity report is standard and um, I don't necessarily need to go through that. I'd, I'd rather talk about uh, your request for accomplishments aligned with strategic things. But I, the one thing that uh, that's uh, really upscale in that monthly activity report is the work of the broadband committee uh, led by Bruce, Gal uh, Bruce Balson and Leo Carlson. And they've uh, expanded the committee to get a broader perspective. They've been reaching out to uh, all the existing and some potential service providers and um, town representatives. So they're, they're really you know, utilizing this rising opportunity to see where the needs are, where the actionable opportunities are. And then of course we monitor the American Rescue Plan, the Public Service Commission, so that any local investments then are 
properly offset and maximized. So that's um, yeah, it's a fast moving thing. It's going to be happening, and it, it's a it's certainly a big item for the economic future of the county. And uh, just speaking of grant opportunities, which I, I uh, certainly admire those efforts and can uh, sympathize what it takes to get those. Uh, but we, uh, we're we monitoring a couple right now that uh, are timely, they, you know, they're up in July, but one, um, I'm in communications to see it, it's, without getting the complications, it's a hub and spoke type model that Small Business Administration is going to support. And um, whether that hub is best uh, placed regionally, and then we become a spoke in that, um, you know, communicating with uh, Small Business Development Center, which is SBA funded, um, you know, with Northwest uh, and Workforce Investment Board and others. So that the prospects are just coming together on that, but it really, on the surface, when you read it, it's designed to support the work that the economic corporation does every day. So we'll see where that goes. There is a potential that if nothing happens regionally that we could create a local hub and then work with, uh, create a, uh, a more localized thing where we're working with the visitor center, the chambers in both winter and Hayward. So um, you might be hearing from me on some of that uh, for the weeks up. So that's, and then there's, there's, there's another, all these things seem to happen at once, but there's a larger placemaking opportunity out from the U.S. Department of uh, Agriculture. They sent it around to bid representatives and uh, it really looks like it's designed to support the planning process, which Hayward has already conducted and their priorities are implementation. Um, so that this doesn't seem like it's gonna be that. Under a different scenario, if we had built some capacity, uh, you know, it, it would have opportunities for other placemaking uh, engagement in the county, like Southern Sawyer County, connecting those things. But uh, so we're watching these things, it's, it's, it's a daily thing. But that's the value of having partners and connections and priorities. And uh, so we'll uh, continue to move forward. Hopefully some funding's gonna come out of one of these two initiatives. The second report that I, I put in was, um, as, as requested, the, uh, our accomplishments over the past year, year and a half, aligned with our strategic priorities. And the Economic Development Corporation does proceed with a plan. We have a strategic plan dated 2020 to 2023. that has got all the usual things in it. Obviously it's a big palette with, uh, you know, the issues, housing to workforce development to broadband. I mean, as the list goes on. So we uh, continue uh, to, um, Keep those first and foremost. Try to try to deliver on any one of those individually or in partnership as best we can. Um, on the on the executive summary, we we have prepared um, a more in depth funding request for this year's uh, request to the county. It's about a five page document uh, that won't be full won't be approved by the Economic Development Corporation Board until Thursday of this week. I didn't. Didn't think you wanted a five-page document to sort through at this point, so I, I did create this executive summary, which is the lead into that report. Um, they're not in any priority, and uh, I mean, as far as their list on it's at all they're all priorities. It's just not a prioritized list. But uh, one exciting development that that happened is we had. Uh, um, worked with uh, you know, WITC in the jail to do some projects in the past. There, seemed, there, there was a de desire to continue that kind of work. We had solicited a, a $5,000 anonymous donation, which we were unable to implement last year. And uh, currently have uh, this month, uh, it'll start uh, the Northwest uh, Workforce Development Board will begin training within the, the Sawyer County Jail and a culinary arts program 
similar to, they did a similar program in Bayfield and Price counties with a, a very good uh, uh, return on the effort and people getting into the workforce and having the opportunities. It isn't all cooking. There's a lot of the social skills and stuff it takes to fill some of the voids we have out in our uh, community. We always continue fundraising, um, uh, not only getting local support from local institutions and uh, businesses, uh, but increasingly now we're, you know, we're looking to the grants for the, the larger amounts of funding. Uh, we've done some, uh, some work, which I'll, I'll highlight later as far as building our capacity to do that. Um, we, as you all know, we reported here monthly, um, the Economic Development Corporation Board, certainly before I was involved, was very fast to respond to the, the rising COVID issue early last year. In March, they put together a, a recovery response team. And that, you know, there was several of us. Um, we, as things sort of weekly played out, we designed weekly webinars with up-to-date information to people and, and experts uh, from the Small Business Administration and the Development Center. Um, but that, you know, then we had a, an online capacity and people would contact us and we assisted 43 businesses in that several month period. We continued some of that throughout the year. And I currently keep, uh, you know, we have a list of over 250 businesses that will send out curated, timely information. There is, everybody's getting inundated with a lot of information. We try to cut through it to, you know, have things that are immediately responsive to Sawyer County businesses. And hopefully that continues to be a value uh, without unduly, you know, and overriding everybody's inbox. I mentioned uh, that about the broadband uh, uh, committee's activities, but, uh, they, you know, they're constantly uh, in, um, in communication with the main players, Norvato, Pepcom, and Mosaic's a new one coming into the southeastern part of the county. We did last year work with uh, La Couture and Sawyer County Housing Authorities. Uh, there was an opportunity from WIDA, the Wisconsin Housing uh, Organization, to do a, a real affordable workforce housing initiative pilot. It seemed like we were well positioned, that we had uh, a high level of cooperation. We put together uh, a team, a diverse team to represent that should we be selected. We were not selected. Um, they only, they selected only six. And, but our, our application piqued a lot of interest within WIDA and we've had several um, virtual meetings with WIDA staff to see how, you know, not only to track this pilot to see what could happen that would assist uh, our efforts in the county, but also how WIDA could assist us down the line. And those conversations continue. The relationships are really what will position, are positioning us to take advantage of what comes out of it. There's a, uh, today we have a planning meeting. Um, it, it's a, an exciting opportunity that's gonna be sponsored with uh, by the Economic Development Corporation, uh, the, the Couture Ojibwe College, uh, working with the U.S. Uh, Economic Development Administration and First, First American Capital Corporation. They come around, they bring this, uh, they create kind of a, a summit basically, but it's called the Tribal Enterprise and Economic Development Resources Toolbox. Um, it's really designed to bring uh, um, the tribal community and larger community together to see see not only what all is out there, but how to um, make sure it just isn't a bunch of random pieces that the, the pieces fit. They've been very successful in where they've done this. Both Red Cliff and Bad River um, got significant support as a result of this type of activity from the Economic Development Administration to organize their economic development approaches so we're hoping that good things are going to happen. That's going to be scheduled for August. Um, but I, I think that as as you you know you'll have a chance to look at the full uh, 
accomplishments for the year, but uh, some of the things that I, I think the organization and I, that I, I really give a lot of credit to the board of directors on is, you know, first of all, jumping in real early last year on, on the evolving COVID situation before even the full ramifications of closures and everything uh, were felt. Um, then, then that evolved into, in July, retaining halftime an executive director. For, maybe they had done that for a short period in the past. And, and I worked halftime until last month, then uh, they increased that time to three quarter time. So we're building, you know, constantly building our capacity, not only in being represented, but also, um, in, in, in this goes back to the grants that uh, Sherry mentioned, uh, you know, you have to be positioned to take advantage of that. You not only have to have all your information and data and everything in order, but when it comes to federal grants, you have to be registered with, uh, with uh, the, the federal system awards management system, which it's, it's bureaucracy and, you know, should be plug and play. But as we started looking under the hood at the growth and development of this organization, there was just uh, uh, intricacies that need to be worked out. Like, you know, the, we had one name acronym for our IRS number, another one for our DUNS number. You know, we just had to align all I'm just going to ask you, can, is there, can you sum up exactly what you want from the executive summary that we should be looking at as the board? Um, well, our, our request this year to the county board will be for $25,000, the same as last year. And um, we hope that uh, the county feels that it's a, they've had a good return on investment. And, um, you know, we spent a lot of time talking to people thinking about going into business, in business. We really deal a lot with what's considered core numbers. And if you, Put it in a core number perspective to $25,000 divided by the population of the county is $1.52 per person. That's what we're, we'd be requesting this year. Any questions for Mr. Gardner? Mr. Bizonette, do you have any questions for Mr. Gardner or anything on the documents that have been, sub been submitted? Um, well, I just want to make a quick statement. Um, that it is good to see that the Economic Development Committee is working with the various tribal entities. I think that's really good. Um, because going back to the grants, um, you know, having uh, been involved in grant writing for a number of years with federal and state agencies, I know exactly what you're saying when you're, when you're saying it's pretty convoluted and ever evolving, it always changes. But anyway, um, you know, the other point is, is that with the, the Recovery Act plan, um, there's going to be a lot of grant opportunities. The tribe is gearing up for taking advantage of a lot of them. I'm making the assumption that Michelle Bodine would be working because she's on the, the board um, that should be probably discussing this with collaborative ideas. And then uh, the only question I really had was, you know, that workforce housing initiative pilot program with the with the housing authority, was that a tax credit application? No, that was not. Um, there was a tax credit, and there currently is a tax increment credit uh, thing that I, that I believe that the tribe did receive um, that's currently in play, but that is not what this PETA thing was. Oh, okay. And just one other uh, other thing, Brian, is uh, I, I stay in communication with Roy John Jack, the head of the grants department, and uh, we're always looking for things to both plant our feet on and move forward on. So, uh, and I keep up with Michelle, so. Okay, good. Because, uh, you know, broadband is going to be a priority for the tribe. So, you know, I, going back to the, the county and, and the lack of broadband, Countywide, that's going to be a. It could be a good collaborative effort. Any other questions for Mr. Gardner? Hearing none. Thank you for your report. Moving on to number twelve. 
motorized trail and non-motorized trail report. Mr. Morotek. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, being that we've been talking about history, your snowmobiling started back in the 60s and such. In the 70s, Sawyer County started getting grants for it. And that's when they actually hired somebody to be a trail coordinator and get funded money for our snowmobile trails back in the 70s. So in reference to what Linda brought up, and thank you, Linda, for bringing it up on that, uh, Sawyer County did do that, but that was through the forestry department. That was way before economic development was, was involved at all. It's very fortunate Sawyer County saw the economics for it way back then, saw the need for the snowmobiling, and it has just exploded since then. And of course, with snowmobiling, the ATVs became involved out there. Um, trail coordinators more involved with getting funded ATV trails too. Uh, Sawyer County has benefited tremendously by the motorized sport. And along with the motorized, we have our silent sports group. I think we work very well together, both the motorized and silent sports with our trails. We got some of the best trails in the state, if not in the nation, for both silent and motorized trails. Uh, got a lot of traffic coming up to Sawyer County for our trails. Most everybody can see the ATVs coming into the town here. Uh, it, it's, been, it's been a wonderful thing. So we've got, I think, about the second largest number of trails in our county in the state compared to, I think there's only one other county that has more trails. There's other counties that have more miles of road use, but people want to get out and enjoy the trails. We need roads open up to connect to their businesses and connect to trails, but people enjoy the trails more. So with that being said, it's been great. A lot of traffic out here. We've got we've got the best county up here for, for both woods and water out there. Side of that water rights. Any questions for Mr. Morocek? Mr. Bizonet, do you have any questions for Mr. Morocek? Yeah, hi Don. Um, last week Henry was out doing some patrolling on the trails as well as we started repairing some of them. He said that there were some uh, some gravel on some spots on our trails. Do you have guys out there uh, doing some kind of um, filming holes or whatever? Yeah, some of the club members have been out there working on some of the trails. And I've been out of town a lot lately the last couple of weeks, but I'll be working and checking with them this week to see what all is going on. Brian, are you talking about the blockage that's on the Indian Trail? Yeah, that was one of them. And then uh, I believe he said that there was one other spot. Why would why would someone be blocking the trails? Shouldn't be blocking the trails. No, they should be put, put gravel out there to be put down on the trails, but there should be no blockage of any of the trails. Maybe after today, we want to take a drive down. It's on the Indian Trail, so you know okay. you know where that's at on the reservation? Yep. Yep. There's yep. a trail that goes through there, and on both sides of the road, there's um, gravel that's it's blocked. And so I don't know if that's because they were staging it to be dispersed or what, but that that means I don't know what that translates as non county stuff on red so it means you can't go down that road. So um we're gonna want to just take a look at that. I'll check on that. I, I know they were also looking at the bridge out there. Uh, which bridge? Because there's one that's under constant construction. Uh, and under up Indian Indian Trail there? Yeah. Um the decking on that is in terrible condition and possibly need to replace the whole bridge. So, so who would be responsible? Is that a tribal issue or is that a county issue for that trail? The bridge was put in by tribal donation, uh, tribal money, tribal county money back then. Right now, for us to put in for it, we have to apply for a grant on it. Okay. And that's not going to happen this year. You know, we're already past the grant. Well, you're sitting next to probably one of the most successful grant writers. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Sherry. You just don't think so. Hey, Don, when you get a chance, why don't you give me a call later and then we can discuss because I know that uh, the planks on the or the decking was pretty bad on the bridge. So, <laughs> not that we can afford lumber right now, but. <laughs> Okay, are you going to be in all day today? It's you, Brian. Yeah, uh, probably this afternoon is going to be best for me, though, because as soon as I get done with this, I got some other things I got to address real quick. But um, yeah, so why don't you give me a call this afternoon? 
Okay, we'll do. Mr. Duffy, you got the, the version report? I do have. Um, let's see what's going on. First of all, the registration is 5,500. Um, they've started to cut the trail, uh, groom the trails now for cutting the grass. Had a big bike race this past weekend, 750 bikers. Uh, this coming year, they're going to expand the Berkey week. Uh, we've always had three days. Uh, Berkey was on Saturday and uh, Friday and Saturday. And on uh, Wednesday was the kids race and the Varda Berkey and uh, the giant ski and dog races and whatever. They're going to add to that now a Wednesday race, which will be a no timed open track, which means you can start whenever you want to and finish leisurely. So it will be another day on the main street and use the trail. So my registration is ahead of last year, or last year, the year before. So everything looks good for the group. Any questions uh, for Mr. Duffy on the Berkey report? Mr. President, do you have any questions for Mr. Duffy? No. Thank you for the report. Number 13. All right, so <clears throat> it seemed to have caused a little bit of consternation on Friday. Um, there was a letter of support that was requested by the college. The, the Elsio College has a grant opportunity uh, with a federal agency. It's called Wisconsin, or not Wisconsin, something with Development Corporation. And it's a grant opportunity to bring in some money for economic development. It sounds vague because I only found out about it about one o'clock on Friday. And uh, just in full disclosure, I am the uh, general counsel for the college in my other my other capacity. And so um, I really tried to push this off to our board chair to have him sign it, but um, communicating by email is more dangerous than it is to just get up and go and find somebody. And so at the risk of invoking open meetings laws and, and uh, the wrath of, of citizens, I did send out an email. This letter had to be uploaded into the uh, at SAM site, which is the federal, that's that, that repository for all the grants. The, the deadline was close of business on Friday. I did have a chance to talk to Tweed over the weekend. Um, he didn't have any problem with that. He was concerned with the email. So there was more discussion about the email communication than there was about the letter. So what I have in front of you today, if everyone had a chance to look at that, is I would like to have this committee look at this, at this letter and if someone were to entertain a motion, what we would do is uh, ratify this letter and then send it for full, to the full board for a formal ratification so that um, we follow the steps that are necessary. So that's my, that's my mea culpa. That's my brief explanation as to what this letter is, is for and my request for assistance. I'll make the motion to. Thank you. I appreciate it. I have a motion for Ms. Hessel to, I'm assuming, is to approve this letter yes, and to advance exactly it to the full board. Yes. And I have a second for Mr. Duffy. Is there any discussion on the motion? Mr. Bizonette, do you have any questions? Nope. Hearing no more discussion, call for, a, call for a vote on the motion. All in favor of the motion, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Number 14 is a historical society update. This is a placeholder. We're actually trying to get a meeting set up for the month of July with uh, Kinnaman, with the uh, Tribes Historic Preservation Officer, who looks an awful lot like Mr. Bizonet, and uh, the County Historical Society, so that we can have a discussion as to what, what kind of teamwork would, uh, what kind of uh, collaboration would look like um, it's been it's been brought to my attention that most of the documents, not most of them, some of the documents at the County Historical Society have been digitized. And what they're needing really is assistance in identifying the photographs and the images that are there so that there's a proper identification. And I talked with Faye Smith, who is the kind of the head of what the Kinnaman Project is, which is it's kind of like a tribal equivalent of what the County Historical Society is. And they would love to, they, they actually have a relationship with the historical society. They know that there's, um, they need, um, uh, they need, they need help. They need help in terms of just physical people being present for getting displays out, but they could probably stand some assistance in marketing and trying to get the word out to different areas so that this could be set up as a, 
a way for this information to be, um, be made available to the public. So, with that being said, that's the update. And that next month is when it's, we're really going to try to get the, the rubber on the road and get some people in here. So, any questions regarding the, 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 society, the society update? They are open now. What is it like? It's, I think, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I yeah. think so. It's that. Can we get the minutes to reflect that? Uh, any other questions regarding this society update? Comments? Moving on to number 15. All right, so at the last full county board meeting, the attempt to try to pass a mission statement consistent for this committee came under some analysis from some of our distinguished colleagues and them. The major concern that was raised was that the mission statement was being read as a document that could potentially usurp the reporting and jurisdictional cons uh, responsibilities of other committees. I went back and looked at the statutory definitions. I looked at other documents and mission statements, and I think that that concern is unfounded. And the reason why I say that, the county has a myriad of responsibilities of which the county board has um, the oversight the, the constitutional oversight over those operations. They look at budget, they look at personnel, but the, the management of those duties are actually prescribed to a county administrator and then the departments carry them out. And then there's entities that operate within the county that need a connection or use these committees as a connection. So every committee has some aspect of the delegated responsibility of the county board and, and, and the interaction between stakeholders, citizens, players, and whatnot. Nothing has been presented in any of the boards where it says one committee over another has authority to tell what one committee to do to the other one. I think what it is is, the way I've read this is that there are certain aspects that are relevant to the mission of the departments, and then they speak to that part. Here's my example. Mr. Paulson had raised the concern that land force water is the permitting agency that allows for the silent sports to operate within the county. And that by having silent sports reporting to this committee, that somehow diminishes the responsibility of land, force, and water. Well, I would, here's my counterpoint. This is what it will be raised at the next full board meeting, depending on what this committee decides. The permitting authority gives per people permission to conduct their operations within the county. And if someone does not have a permit, or if someone violates that permit, it is law enforcement that comes through to enforce that. And then we have the court system that interprets the conduct to see whether or not they're comporting with, with the law. That's under public safety. So if we were to, to extrapolate the Mr. Paulson's argument to the, to the full length, then we have multiple jurisdictions overlapping with limited roles and, and enforcement capacities and whatnot. We would have to actually remove the permitting process from land, force, and water and delegated out to public safety because public safety is the whole purpose for the permitting process in the first place. That's not my argument. All I was trying to do was make a mission statement so that this committee could have some guidance going forward. And I'm not trying to get into a contest over who's how many crayons we get to play with when we come to these meetings. So I say this, and I've had a corporate counsel look at this, and she's available if anybody has any questions. I would only ask this. If we want a mission statement, we have one in front of us. Um, if we don't want one, we've, got, we've operated this long without it. Mr. Hoff has put out a call almost at the beginning of every election season, whenever we've gotten new commissioners to say, can we do a mission statement because it helps with the mission of that, of that committee. There's nothing in here that I think that should be changed. It was drafted under the model that Land Force Water had put in place with the overbroad request for what this committee can do. If this committee wants to re-examine that, I will leave that open for the discussion. Rebecca is available if you guys want to have questions. Otherwise, I would ask, can we just send this back up to the full board again with some support in terms of what we're trying to accomplish? We're not trying to make ourselves more powerful. We're just trying to provide guidance so that if someone looks at our county policies, and there's probably six or seven of us in the county who've actually read them, there's, a, there's guidance as to what this committee does. So. I open the floor up to discussion, and at some point, I would entertain a motion to 
take this mission statement as it's currently drafted and resubmit it back to consideration of the full board. Mr. Chairman, I think some of the problems that Bruce has is, um, for example, uh, in the report of the Berkey this, this month, uh, the Berkey is now trying to install solar power on the Johnson building, all the trail lights and all the rest stations along the trail, and they're going back to the forestry committee for that approval. So I think that's where the conflict comes. Uh, Bruce thinks that they want to control the, the trail, additions on the trail, lighting improvements or whatever. So I think we have to just clarify there's a role for both committees as far as things like sound sports. And I think the mission statement actually does that. I was also going to interject that we don't we don't uh, tell the fair what to do when they report. We don't tell anybody what to do when they report. It's for report purposes only. So that was my comment to Mr. Paulson as well. Is this is just for reporting? So the mission statement is what our job is, but just the reporting is that of the entity. It's not our job to tell them what to do anyway. We just want to make sure the economics are there, but we don't tell anybody what to do. So on that, I would make a motion to bring this back to the full board as I did last month and continue with it as it's written. So I have a motion from Ms. Hessel on the board to uh, resubmit this mission statement in its entirety and un unchanged back to the full board. And I'll second the motion. I have a second for Mr. Duffy. The discussion, Mr. Bizonet, do you have anything you wish to add? Um, the only comment I have, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's Pretty good, I guess. You got a lot of provides in there, but uh, um, it's pretty straightforward mission statement. So I would add this. There is nothing in any of the constitutional documents from the federal government through the state government, through the statutes that says that jurisdiction means exclusive jurisdiction. If it said that, it would say that. If it doesn't say that, then it's assumed that it's not there. So if a committee wants to have Silent Sports come in and talk about the economic impact or what's ever happening for the, the upcoming events or asking for endorsements, then it would probably be proper to come in front of economic development and giving them a, a place for them to present that information I think is appropriate. If they're going to ask to put solar panels up there or if they were going to fly, fly the, you know, the Packers championship banners, then they would have to get a permit, and that would be probably appropriate that they, they go in front of them, in front of land, force, and water. And if they were going to issue COVID shots for people who wanted to do the Berkey Trail, they would probably want to go in front of Health and Human Services, and they probably, because that's a one-time, one-off issue, they would probably ask to put on the agenda and then present that so that the Health and Human Services, which has that response by the end of theirs. I mean, it's, I think it's, it's really, It's a very nuanced argument that Mr. Paulson had presented. And I think that our county board is, um, time is better suited in discussing larger issues than, than what a mission statement says and as a county board, because we've operated this long without it, to just put it in there and then all of a sudden we have these issues about who's reporting where. But we should wait until everybody has actually put their mission statement in from all of the committees before we actually have that, that discussion. I think we're really, you know, Torturing ourselves with this. Well, can we add some language that would satisfy the policy? <clears throat> the he, language I, mean, I want to add is probably not appropriate for the mission statement. <laughs> I, I know he was concerned also about the bridges we, we, we had. He said, no, that's, that's his committee. <laughs> okay. Um, it's actually not his committee, it's the committee of land force. Yeah, law, so. yeah. We're all working together. I think that is kind of noted in all of our yeah. mission statements that we're all working together. Yeah. And it's a, it's a full board issue anyway. So. Yeah. I just, I mean, if there's really concerns, I know that this was a, it was one of the closest votes that we had at the county board. And there were people on this committee who voted to bring this back to discuss this. So, I mean, what is the concern? Is it, you want extra language? What would the extra language that you feel would be appropriate? I think it's a, this is as vague as a mission statement as it can be, vague in terms of who can report and what we're asking for. Ms. Zilmer brings up some excellent, excellent points about planning, but I was nervous about putting planning in there because I didn't want this committee to be look like it's trying to drive the ship going forward. And if I were to put in this committee is in responsible strategic planning for the county, then I can't even imagine what the, what the discussion would be at the full board. And, but that's, she's absolutely 
spot on correct. We should be looking at a long-term vision with a with what we're trying to hope to accomplish. And we should have input from all the committees, but we should have a place where where stakeholders, if they have a question, they come to a right spot. I mean, if they if um if we're say climate change becomes an issue, right? And and someone wants to come in and say they want to change up the Berkey so that it's more climate change and they go in front of health and human services because they think it's a health issue. What's health and human services going to say? Well, all right, thank you, but you should probably go talk to the plant. I mean, it's just uh, all right. We have, we have a motion on the floor. Mr. Bizonette, do you have any other comments or concerns? Anything else you wish to raise? Um <clears throat> no, not off the top of my head. Mr. Duffy, you have any, any last comments or questions? No, I think the, unless we could add something that we have concurrent jurisdiction, that's going to satisfy me, and us too. Um, Ms. Roker, are you on the line with us? Yes, sir, I am. So, Mr. Duffy asked about concurrent jurisdiction. Did I have someone who's hand was up? Do I have someone who's hand? Okay. Well, I'm going to go with Rebecca or Ms. Roker, and then I'm going to go with Ms. Silman. So, Ms. Roker, the question about adding language about concurrent jurisdiction. Um, from a legal standpoint, um, the committees do have concurrent jurisdiction. Um, the only time a committee would have exclusive jurisdiction is if the statutes um, explicitly provide, <clears throat> excuse me, that exclusive jurisdiction. With respect to the example of the Berkey, there isn't such a delegation of exclusive jurisdiction. So if it's not in the statutes, then we look to county ordinances. Um, and I do see, you know, in the version that includes, um, you know, the primary oversight of the Berkey Biner, how there could be some confusion, um, particularly with respect to, um, you know, the operations of the double O building. I'm thinking of the example um, when we, when the county, um, negotiated the double O building leases. You know, that was appropriately um, commenced at land and water. I think we would all agree with that. So in terms of adding additional language, um, just to, to, again, for clarification purposes, um, if I may be so bold as to suggest that at the very end of the reporting relationships introductory clause, if you say, the committee shall have primary responsibility of conferring with and acting as liaison for the following organizations for purposes of economic development. Um, because then, you know, certainly this committee um, has an important relationship with all of these organization, organizations for purposes of economic development. Um, and that may satisfy some other concerns with respect to the concurrent jurisdiction of other committees, obviously land and water at issue here. Um, for its oversight of um, different aspects of these organizations. Um, these organizations are, you know, they're, they're complex entities and they present a lot of different issues. And I think it would be virtually impossible to clearly explicitly state what um, committees have control, oversight of particular aspects of these organizations. So I think it's important um, to have an acknowledgement of that broad jurisdiction, which indeed is, you know, concurrent jurisdiction. And again, if I may be so bold as to suggest that you add those few last words to the um, relate to the reporting relationship paragraph, that may resolve the issue for clarification of concurrent jurisdiction. All right, so I have Ms. Zilmer and then Mr. Duffy. Ms. Zilmer, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, I would like to be recognized under future agenda items because I had a comment about the work with the Historical Society, but I think Attorney Roker is hitting on what might be a sticking point that the current language says primary responsibility for and that her suggested language would, would help clear that up. Thank you. Please recognize me in um, future agenda items. What is it? Yeah. The next agenda item is future. Oh, I got you. No, I'm nothing more. Are you okay? So, the language that's being offered by corporate counsel, do you feel appropriate that? Yeah. yeah. What do you think? Yeah. I 
I need to rescind my motion to reflect the addition to your mission statement before we send it to the full board. So that's it again? I need to rescind my, don't I? I need to make a motion. I need to retract my motion. Do you want to retract this. your motion? Well, I think it's appropriate given that we got legal counsel and to add that. So we have one of two ways to do that. You can resend your motion, which then we have to get resend the second. And then you can resubmit it, or you can amend your motion to incorporate the language that's recommended. I would like to amend my motion to incorporate the language that was. That's fine. And Mr. Duffy, yeah. you're okay with amending it yeah. to reflect. So Rebecca, um, you're probably gonna have to send an email to Ms. Fitch so that we can get the language correct. So that, uh, um, and then if you could, I'm afraid to ask for an email so we can get the language. <laughs> No, it's, it's very simple, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it'll be four words for purposes of, five words, for purposes of economic development. All right, excellent. Any other questions on the revised motion? Mr. Bissonnette, do you have anything you wish to add? Nope, sounds good. <clears throat> Any other questions, period? All right, uh, call for a vote on the motion. All in favor of the motion, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions, motion carries. So that will be going to the full board for the next Thursday, for the Thursday meeting. All right, number 16, future agenda items. Ms. Zilmer, is this what you meant by being recognized? Yes, sir, thank you. Um, I wanted to bring up something about the ongoing work with the Historical Society. I think it was back when Mr. Bissonnette was on his prior term as a county board supervisor and Mr. Morgan was on this committee. I had raised the issue about um, maintenance of the historical markers in Sawyer County. Uh, a lot of tourists like to do some educational and historical uh, edutainment when they come to this area. And it bothers me so much um, to go past, especially the marker at the end of Windigo Lake on Highway 27, and it's not maintained. So I had done some work to confirm that it wasn't the County Highways Department to maintain it and brought it to this committee to ask if they could somehow resolve maintenance of that. Mr. Morgan had uh, talked with the Wisconsin State Historical Society, as had I, to confirm that historical markers need sponsors. So when that marker was approved, I don't know if that was in the 60s or before, it was the County Historical Society that um, took on having that marker. But when we had attended a, a society meeting, Nobody currently on that board thought that that was their responsibility. So I think both from a historical and an educational and even a tourism perspective, if the county could look into maintaining, you know, getting it straight going forward, what these significant um, markers mean. And I know even tr I had mentioned this tribally because that the significance of that market marker is a portage. Thank you. All right, so adding the discussion of the historical markers for the county. Actually, I'm in favor of that. So is there any opposition to putting that on as a future agenda? Is there any support for it? Well, it's just that they're elderly. I don't know. The people that are currently working are just already saying overall as a county. Overall as a county. I'd okay. like to actually alleviate them of that because I agree. I think it's on their not fair for them to have that if they inherited it from something else. So I think a general discussion, maybe identification of historical markers in the county, and then trying to figure out who the sponsor and who's responsibility for that, because I think that's a really good, that's actually a good point. So we're going to add historical markers and then uh, we'll figure out if the roads department should be in charge of that or law enforcement, or we'll create another ad hoc committee to look into the <laughs> Who, who owns the, the markers? I don't know. That's what I think it's the state, but that's why it's confusing. Well, no, I, and I think Ms. Summer brings up a good point. They're sponsored, but the sponsors probably are not aware of it because everyone's just kind of moved, moved past it. And now we just have them up there and one looks at it. 
everyone wants to talk about it, but they look at it for 30 seconds and then they're gone. So I think the county should take some affirmative responsibility in addressing that, either reconnecting who the sponsors are and getting them updated or taking that over. Maybe we can do that for land, force of water, and let them work on that. All right. Mr. Wender, I just, can, may I answer the question that was raised? Uh, the work that Mr. Morgan and I did, it is not the state responsibility. Um, part of sponsoring the, you know, creating a marker, it's that the, the organization agrees to take it on going forward. And this, this not maintaining it has, has been a decades long issue. And I know because I spent the first 30 of years of my life pretty much spending a lot of time across the road for it. So it's something that um, before it gets too bad, it'd be nice to address. Thank you. Any other items that the committee would like to have addressed for the next meeting? All right, moving on to number 17, correspondence reports, conference with meetings, other matters for discussion only. Ms. Hessel, do you have anything to add? No. Mr. Duffy? No. Mr. Bizonette? No. Yep. Right, I have one. Mr. Duffy, there's a really distinct possibility of not to be present for the uh, full board on, on uh, next Thursday. So, one, I'll probably need you to do a, a report of what to present sure. on behalf of the committee. Sure. Um, you're probably going to have to carry the mission statement argument. And, uh, I'll back it. And, uh, oh, and the letter of support for the Ojibwe College. So okay. we'll need a copy of vote or something to that effect. Hopefully they support it. Tweet said he supports it. So. As long as you don't send any emails, I guess. Apparently you can do whatever you want. Just don't need emails when you're dealing with the county board. Um, if there's anything else, Mr. Bizonet, last comments? Uh, I don't have any. With that, we are adjourned, everybody. Thank you. Are adjourned as far as the language?